Welcome to the Punter, your best guide to the weekend's Premiership games. I'm Flash Gordon Watson, and today I'm with Sporting Bet's top man, Russ Wiseman. Great weekend, Russ. Where are you going? Great action everywhere, Flash. I'm actually racing tomorrow, would you believe it? Haydock, that's a big, big race meeting there. Some quality horses taking part in uh, some quality action there. But the big event for me, the main event of the weekend, I'm at Stamford Bridge on Sunday. Chelsea versus Man City. Rafa Benitez now in charge of a team. He said he'd never manage. So that's the big betting heat. I know we'll be looking ahead of that uh, later in the show. We will. And talking of betting, we've got Nigel the Bet Butler Seeley on the other side of the studio. And Mark Hughes, gone, Butler. About time, Flash. I mean, I'm, I've been wanting Mark Hughes out for the last three weeks. It's finally happened. We can build in a season but as a QPR fan I think it could be too little too late I think we're in deep trouble and we're favourites to go down for a reason we've got some tough fixtures coming up starting at the weekend and we'll get back to the price on them in a bit OK well we're going to start off at the 12.45 kickoff, which is obviously at the Stadium of Light Sunderland versus West Brom Russ and Sunderland on the back of a decent win at Craven Cottage. Yeah, terrific win for them there. Obviously helped having his sending off that uh, really assisted Martin O'Neill's men. Big problem for them though. One win out of the last eight at the Stadium of Light. That used to be a fortress, didn't it, for Sunderland? The traditionally it was. And they're facing a West Brom side flash. You've gone for four wins on the bounce. The first time in the top flight since 1980. This is a team going places. This is also a team that I tipped up on the punter to go down. So they're doing really well. You have to believe though that the, the value in this game probably lies now with the home side. Butler, what, what price Sunderland to actually get off the mark at home? Well, I mean, if you price this game up last week, it would have been totally different what you're getting tonight. They, today, they changed their game. They come to Fulham, pulled off a little bit of a shock Sunday. They're seven to five to win this game. A decent bit of bet for me. West Brom at two to one, and the draw at twelve to five. West Brom's form is all about at home, away from home, not to be better on. Sunderland need to turn it around, and seven to five you can get for your money on that. 75 looks like a decent price for a side that just off the back of a win at Craven Cottage. I really like Sunderland in this one. I think it's all about value and the punter obviously focuses on that value. West Brom, as the butler quite rightly says, they're not the team they are at the Hawthorns away from home. They do struggle there. But Sunderland, this is a team, well, listen to this for a stat uh, flash, 21 sh uh, shots they've had on target this season. I mean, incredible. The low. That's the lowest of the top five leagues in Europe. So this is a team that needs to start scoring. The pressure will be on Stephen Fletcher to do it. But I think they can do it in this game. As I say, West Brom do do not travel well. They'll struggle at the Stadium of Light, I think. But we like Sunderland, but maybe not many goals. Well, you say that, Flash. If you look at the stats for the last four years, it's goals, goals, goals in this fixture. 15 of the beauties in the last four games. But statistically now this season, totally different. Sunderland have only scored three at home this season. West Brom only the five away. So I'm looking at the under. Under two and a half at nine to ten. The value all season has been go over and over and over. We see unbelievable amount of goals. It was on a nil-nil in the entire football calendar last weekend in England and Scotland. And over two and a half goals is the value is the bet here at even money. That's a statistical blow. I think under two and a half goals represents some good value here at nine to ten in what I think could be a nervy encounter and I'll go for a low scoring draw. Yeah, I think you'll have plenty of supporters there, but we're going to go to the first of the three o'clock kickoffs and it's at Goodison, Everton versus Norwich. Everton surely home win. All the stats point to Everton, don't they? Flash in Norwich are very poor away from home. Only one win from the last 12. Everton, seven out of the last nine. They've won at Goodison and they haven't even lost the other two. So this is a tough place to go, isn't it? And the Toffees now a team flying high. Small squad, but real quality in that side. And uh, you just have to believe that Everton will win the game. But the odds will reflect that, won't they, surely? Butler, did the odds reflect an Everton win? Certainly so, Flash. I mean, Everton now have sort of been priced up as about the fifth or sixth Premier League side, which they should be. They've always been a little bit of value for punters, not any more. They're 8-15 to 15 to win this game. If you like your odds on, though, I think that's a good tempt some people in here, 8-15. to 15. Everton, unbeaten at home. Norwich haven't won away this season. The thing is with Everton, they've drawn an awful lot of games. They've drawn four of the last six. Last season, it was 1-1. Can't make a case for Norwich, but if anything, the draw 130 could be a little bit of a tempter, but not for me. Everton will be too strong. 8-15. 15. Fellaini's a big doubt. See if he plays. Oh, I think he might be suspended, actually. I think Fellaini might be out. That could be the, the, the boost that Norwich need. Draw 130. Maybe a little bit tempting. Fellaini or not, I do fancy Everton. have got a great squad this year. So we're off to uh, Old Trafford next. Manchester United versus the managerless Q Qu Queen's Park Rangers. And I fancy Manchester United are going to really put them to the sword. Yeah, I mean, the prices that the butler will churn out in a minute flash will dictate that people will be putting this in trebles accumulators because around about five, six to one on, that's not really a play for most punters, is it? And uh, you look at QPR's form at the moment, simply desperate. Let's not forget that Man United, probably not the dominant force of old, but they do come back from losing positions. No team in Europe has come back and scored more points from losing positions. And obviously you saw that incredible performance against Villa recently, but you know, all the, all the indicators are that it will be United. One interesting stat here, no draws for Man United 
this season. And that will probably make that kind of uh, market not attractive for me in this one. OK, what price a fully rested Manchester United squad against Queen's Park Rangers, Butler? Well, you're not going to get Rich Flash. They're one to five to win this game. They are going to be the cornerstone of everyone's accumulators. This is the one that Sporting Bet and all the other bookmakers want to get beat. If they can get something out of this game, a draw or a QPR win, it's a fantastic weekend for all the bookies. 13 to two to draw. Russ is absolutely right. No draws for Manchester United this season. QPR have only got that one solitary draw on the road. 16 to one QPR. This time around last year, we had Blackburn going to Old Trafford, didn't we? And winning at odds of 50 to one. The biggest prize winner in the Premier League. You'd want double the QPR price though at 16 to one. You'd want 33 to one. If you, I think 16 to one is no value. It's all about Manchester United. The bookies are going to be filled in on Man United half time, full time. Man United three or four nil, and Man United and all the QPRs this week. They want a draw. They want a QPR win. I don't think it's going to happen. OK, we're off to Britannia next. It's Stoke versus Fulham. And for me, this looks like a really tight game. Very tight, but uh, this is, there's a formula with these two teams that most punters use, Flash, and that is you, you back them when they're at home and you, you lay them when they're away. And, and that tends to be the case. Fulham, however, have been pretty good away from Craven Cottage this season. They haven't lost any of their last three. But Stoke at home are tough. 12, 12 at home undefeated, don't score many goals, and that's probably been the key problem for them. But I think they've, that Tony Pulis' men have shown some signs recently, they're starting to come back. I'd rather stick safe here, play with the formula, and take the home side. I think it's a difficult place to go, especially this time of year. OK, we want a bit of value, Butler, on Stoke. I think you're absolutely right. I think Stoke a tremendous value for this game at 5-4. to four. This is a Fulham side. When you go to Stoke, you want all your big players there, your big, strong lads. Fulham without Hangelen, six foot six, suspended. Means one thing. Stoke five to four, definitely the value. Draw eleven to five, eleven to four. Fulham. Fulham at home. Stoke at home. Stoke bankers for me. Yeah, I think Stoke are, uh, are very reliable. Off to the DW Stadium. Wigan versus Reading. And again, it looks like a six-pointer very early on. Yeah, key game. Obviously, Reading in big trouble. And they've kind of slipped under the radar when people don't realise how big a trouble they're in at the moment, uh, Brian McDermott's men. But I look at this game, you know, Wigan, when they've conceded first in, in their games, they've always lost. Whenever they concede that first goal flash, it's never any good for them. Seven times that's happened this season. So, Reading need to get off to a good start. Clearly, the value will be with Reading here. And I think, again, the DW, a tricky place to go. The market would probably side with Wigan. It's the least attractive, the least popular game so far on the markets at Sporting. But I would suspect most of the other bookmakers. But home win looks, looks a safe play. It's not really an active game for me to get stuck into. Though. Butler, wide open game, wide open prices. Wide open game, and that's why the draw, I think, makes appeal. 11 to 4. Big price of the draws there. Nobody ever backs them. Usually expect them to be about 9 to 4. But 11 to 4 here, definitely might be tempting here for me. Reading played a very similar fixture two weeks ago in Norwich, and it fizzled out to a nil-nil draw. And the stats here, only one goal in the last three meetings between these two sides. Not many goals on show. I think 11 to 4, the draw represents great value. 19 to 20, Wigan, slightly around your even money mark. A little bit odds on. Reading, 100 to 30. But it's all about for the draw for me, and a low scoring one. I like nil-nil here or maybe even 1-1. One, one. I don't see many goals and Wigan, you don't get them. And the pitch, cutting up a little bit there at the, the stadium there and a the draw for me makes some appeal. 11-4. to four. OK, the evening game is Aston Villa versus Arsenal and I look at Aston Villa and I think, are they turning the corner and then they go up against Arsenal? Who you just don't know what you're going to get. Well, Villa, a, a team really, uh, when you think they were 2-0 up against Manchester United halfway through that second half, it's been a disaster since then, hasn't it? It looked as though they had turned the corner, as you rightly say, Flash, but three goals from United, they get bashed next last week against Man City, some unlucky refereeing decisions. It's not going well for Paul Lambert's men, and this doesn't get any easier again, does it? But these evening kickoffs, big turnover for bookmakers, big action. You'll see a big gamble here on Arsenal as well. Whatever the price that the butler puts up now, that will be sure to come kickoff. My personal favourite bet here. Darren Bent's got a great scoring record against Arsenal. Six goals in his last eight games. Maybe Villa can get off to a decent start and he might score the first one. OK, well first of all let's see what price Aston Villa are at home to Arsenal. Well, one thing you're going to see, Flash, you can get your Aston Villa 17 to 4 to win this game around about a little bit bigger than sort of 4 to 1, you're probably for your money there. Arsenal have a tremendous record at Villa Park. They go there, they score goals, and they win. It's at, at, at the Emirates where Aston Villa have done pretty good against Arsenal in recent years. The draw is 3 to 1. I totally agree with what Russ says there. That 3 to 4 Arsenal will go. The only, the only way that'll get bigger is if Man United get beat. Then that might get a little <laughs> bit bigger. But I tell you what, it's going to be an interesting game. There's goals on the agenda when Villa play at the moment. I think they scored 20, they've only 20 goals in the last four games, averaging five a game. Goals, goals, goals. Arsenal look back in goal scoring form. Podolski looks hungry. Giroud looks hungry. I think there's goals on the menu, but unfortunately for Villa fans, I think more of them will be for Arsenal. 
So goals for Arsenal and more goals for Arsenal than Villa. Do you agree? Well, you'd have to imagine that, wouldn't you? As a bookmaker, I'd like to see Arsenal get beat, obviously. And I, I think this is more about Villa than Arsenal, actually. I mean, Arsenal have been disappointing on, on many occasions this season, flattered to deceive. Villa on their day are actually quite useful, but are they carrying scars? As I said, Flash, they've conceded kind of eight goals in a row here, haven't they? Three against United and then those five against Arsenal. It's been really, uh, against um, City, I should say, it's been really disappointing for them. I think this is a character test for Paul Amitt's men. They'll be looking to their quality players like Bent to maybe get them on the score sheet and hang on, I think. OK, we're looking for a bit of value on the overs, I fancy, Butler. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be much value here. Over two and a half goals is four to six. The trend needs to go over. Five of the last six games between these two sides have produced over two and a half goals. Villa at the moment just concede loads of goals and score recently. I think four of their last five have been over two and a half. It's got to be the over two and a half goals. But usually you see around about even money. Not on this occasion. Four to six the bookies. Even over three and a half at 13 to eight would tempt me. I think it's going to be a lot, a great game and a high scoring money at, at the Villa Park. And over two and a half goals, even at four to six represents a little bit of value. OK, so we're looking at maybe a minimum of three goals. We need a first goal scorer. Maybe the value is going to be on the Villa players. Well, I've already nailed my colours uh, firmly to the Villa master in this market. But he's not been so, playing a lot, is he? No, he hasn't. But again, I just look at the the, the, the value here. I mean, it's obviously the, the Arsenal players are going to be the, at the top of the market. Villa at the moment, you've got to look at where you can maybe squeeze a bit of value out of this. I take Butler's point about goals being in the game. It's hard to imagine. It won't be. And these evening kickoffs can produce fireworks. But uh, I look at the Villa, the, the top Villa guys maybe as uh, getting first on, on the score sheet here and giving us maybe a little bit of a kickstart. OK, Butler, we're looking at Villa players to get us off and rolling tomorrow night. Well, that's exactly what happened when they played Manchester United. Wyman did the business for you. He's 11 to 1 to do it. I won't I back Bill Wyman to score in this game anyway. 11 but Giroud, 5 to 1, is the favourite for Arsenal. He's the guy in form. But Podolski, for me, a little bit of value. I don't think there's much between these two in goal scoring at the moment. And Podolski at 6.5 to 1 would tempt me in rather than the 5 to 1. Giroud Wiltshire, 20 to 1. Benteke heads the market for Aston Villa. And Darren Bent, not around about 10 to 1 mark as well. But then will he start? That's the big question. Well, there's your 10 to 1 about Darren Bent to get off to uh, the first goal scorer in the Aston Villa Arsenal game. We're going to take a short break. When you come back, we'll go for the Sunday fixtures. And welcome to The Punter, your best guide to all Sunday's Premiership fixtures. We start with the early one at the Liberty Stadium. It's Swansea versus Liverpool and Russ Wiseman from Sporting Bet. Swansea-Liverpool, that's a tight game. Really difficult game to call considering the form of both teams. I mean, Liverpool always look like they're turning the corner flash. They're always the darling of the market. Everyone always backs them. But in Swansea, they face a team who had their first win in November for God knows how long against Newcastle away, a place that is painfully difficult to go. So not an easy trip for Liverpool. Obviously be reliant on Luis Suarez, one of the top players in the league. But at the moment, I'd be loath to go against Swansea, even though they've only scored one goal in the last six games against Liverpool. But that was a win at the Liberty last May. So I'm, I'm slightly favouring Swansea here. And certainly when we look at the odds that the Butler's about to churn out as well. Butler, Swansea, Liverpool, it's a toss of a coin. Yeah, the bookmakers got really split them a lot, but I think 23 to 20 Liverpool, you expect Liverpool to be bigger than that, but the bookies know that every week Liverpool get backed, and that is why they're so short, 23 to 20. I think Liverpool are on the verge of saying good at the moment. I think Suarez is playing well, and the youngsters coming in are gelling, and I think they're going to give some a real, real good hiding, but I think it's more likely to be at Anfield rather than away from home. Swansea last season won this fixture 1 0, and they will be very, very tempted for some people to back them at 5 to 2. The draw at 12 to 5 could make some appeal as well. A very difficult one you can make here, but 20 23 to 20 Liverpool looks a sh little bit short, but those bookies know that you punted out there, love Liverpool, and you back them whatever price you are. So the value certainly is with these two. Do you see this game being a tight game or an open game? I see it being tight, actually. Flash is one of my fancies of the week. I think it could be under two and a half this. I just think the nature of the game, the way that both teams will set themselves up here, won't want to concede early and uh, obviously look to their quality players to get them on, on the score sheet. Obviously, Suarez is such a massive player for Liverpool. Now, I can't think of another player, actually, who means more to his team than Suarez at the moment. But the butler is bang on the mark there. The money will come for Liverpool. It's inevitable. It's global. It's worldwide. The best supported team for me, probably anywhere in the world. And the pun has always back that up and that's why as a bookmaker I know that Swansea will be value come kickoff. I think that's the way I've got to play this game. I'm with you all the way. I was about to say this, the same thing. Butler, the money's going to come for Liverpool. So, value with Swansea. 
Yeah, certainly a value responsive and value for me is what well, Russ is saying under two and a half goals. They have a very, very similar goal scoring record, these two. Three of the last six games they played in have both been under two goals, but two and a half goals, both seems exactly the same. Um, under two and a half goals here is odds against 21 to 20. I find that incredible. I think it should be the other way around. I think under should be 8 to 11. It was 1 0 when they met last season, only one goal. Liverpool away from home will be very defensive, and obviously Brendan Rodgers doesn't want to go back to his old side and get beat. It's at home where Liverpool score the goals, Suarez scores the goals, and I I think under two and a half goals here at 21 to 20. I agree with Russ, it's one of the best bets of the weekend for me. OK, so we're going to go under. Are we looking at maybe no goal score or are you going to try and uh, pick me one? Well, the butler and I come from a, a, an age-old era where backing no goal score was always the bet, actually. But uh, that's probably going a little bit far. But I, I do think maybe a 1-0 scoreline here for Swansea offers a, a real good kind of correct score. Uh, I certainly think it won't be a, a goal fest. And, and Liverpool, even though they're on the crest of something, I think, they're still poor value just because so many people back them. But I, I'll be playing Swansea in this game pretty aggressively, actually. I do think the unders is a great trading position to take, though. I think that, that could be nil-nil, certainly after half an hour and then you're really in a strong position aren't you five, five. but we can't really pick a goal scorer so pick one for us and also give us no goal scorer price well, I can't really pick one myself because I find it impossible possible as you two. But it's no surprise to me Suarez is the favourite five to one. His current form is fantastic. But no goal scorer flash. Amazing how this price has changed in the 20 years that me and Russ have been in the game. Nine to two used to get on nil nil. On this game, 13 to one. An incredible price. A big big price. 13 to one for no goal scorer. Uh, Mitchell is the favourite Swansea eight to one. But 13 to one no goal scorer. Got to be worth a fiver. Three o'clock on Sunday, St Mary's, Southampton versus Newcastle and Alan Pardew going back to his old club. That's right, uh, Flash, and, and two teams uh, on, on different confidence levels, surely. Southampton finally getting off the mark last week. Nigel Atkins loves to say the positivity, let's stay positive. They're his favourite words. Everything to be positive about the moment. Yeah. They get a 3-1 win away at Queen's Park Rangers. Obviously now Newcastle, of course, uh, they only usually get beaten at home by the top sides. We just mentioned before they were losing at home to Swansea. So two teams may be slightly with momentum going the different way I think it could be a real terrific game six of the last eight games Newcastle have beaten Southampton they drew the other two maybe the value lies this time with taking the underdogs the home side I think it could be a good game could be more like scoring goals in this game than the previous one at the Liberty I think what price uh, have we got for the, the mighty Saints well, Flash, I think this is another good bet tonight. Seven to five, Southampton. Big, big price to draw five to two, and Newcastle eleven to five. I think Newcastle are a team to oppose this season. I think they've done so well last year. They can only go one way, and that's downhill. And I think what we saw Swansea last week is a start of a bad run at Newcastle. Newcastle haven't won a game away from home this season. They've drawn four of the five, and you can back them eleven to five to end that run. I think Southampton at seven to five are a great bet. They scored ten goals at home this season and conceded eleven. Lots of goals are expected for me. And Southampton at seven to five again up there were one of the best bets of the weekend for me. Okay, we're looking at maybe Southampton to score first. Then, do you uh, fancy anyone outside, maybe Ricky Lambert? Well, I actually like Ricky Lambert in this one. I think uh, you know I've heard Chris Graham touting him to be the uh, the top goal scorer in the Premier League. I think that's a, he's a very shrewd judge to, to call out. Ricky Lambert's been a revelation yeah. this year, hasn't he? And uh, I think I think Southampton will win this game. Actually, surprising there to see how short they are, but I do think they'll win. And uh, I think the Butler makes a good point. Newcastle still a trendy team, Flash, because of their brilliant performance last year. But when you come down to it, they're they're, they're a nucleus of very good players who aren't delivering at the moment. I think that's why we've got to be against Alan Pardew's men. Yeah, and we've also got to be uh, against Newcastle because they're absolutely ravaged with uh, injuries. Not that Southampton are uh, not going to put them to the sword anyway, but we're looking for maybe Ricky Lambert. Yeah, I mean, he's been the favourite. He's the corner. He's the one that you really got a big hope. The goal scorer. He's the guy who needs to call the goals to keep Southampton in the Premier League. And he's six to one to do so. This is back to old school first goal in betting. Six to one the field. Turning to none of these seven to two or three to one shots. C say six to one. Big doubt whether he's going to play. So be careful on that one. Denver Bar thirteen to two to get the goal. But Lambert six to one is the best hope there. Lalana twelve to one. But it's all about Ricky Lambert for Southampton. I fancy Southampton to win, and Ricky Lambert will get on the score sheet for me. Probably best to back him to score at any time at around about 7-4, to 6-4 to four, than the 6-1 to one to score the first goal. OK, as long as he scores and all the Saints win, I think there'll be a lot of people on the South Coast very happy. Now to the big one, Stamford Bridge. Rafa Benitez takes charge of Chelsea against Roberto Mancini, Man City, fresh off Champions League exit. Well, I mean, it's just an incredible situation here. Two of Europe's top sides, without without question, the defending Champions League uh, holders, of course, Chelsea out, almost certainly out, City out. This now game takes on a, a totally different perspective, doesn't it, Flash? Huge game. 
Benitez is there as well, but City need to get their season back on track. So I think it's a fascinating game. These games between the top sides are so difficult to call. Punters do wade in on all kinds of markets as well. But I just look at the, the one player here who has been very, very good in this fixture over the years is Man City's Carlos Tevez. He's scored six goals in his last, last six games against Chelsea. He could be the key man here to break Benitez's heart and put Chelsea really under pressure. Butler, we want a prize for Man City. Well, I tell you what, I can't believe the price this market. 13 to 8 Chelsea, very, very short to me. This is a club, they're going to have a big backlash there. I think the fans will turn against Benitez. First time under his reign, Abramovich, Abramovich is under a bit of pressure as well. They're not happy there, and the 13 to 8 is a terrible, terrible bet. The stats tell you Chelsea could do really well. They've only lost twice in the last 15 games in this fixture. But Man City and 9 to 5, the champions, looking good. 5-0 the weekend, forget the Champions League draw. It's all about the Premier League now for them. They can concentrate on defending their title they're back in the range 9-5 to five, definitely back for me 12-5 to five the draw but if I was a bookie sporting bet or all sitting there I'd be laying Chelsea at 13-8 to eight. I would say come and have a go I'll be the best price I just can't have them what about goals, though, Russ? We're looking at got to be goals, surely. Well the, well, the last 18 months, Flash, when these top sides have played each other, I mean, I'd always be under, under goals and 1-0, uh, 1-1. One, one, one. It's just completely off the radar now. We get 6-2s, 8-1s. You, exactly. you just do not know what's going to happen when these t kind of teams play each other. You've got to be the over the goals, haven't you, surely? Because simply because too many quality offensive players out there, who knows what kind of condition and what state either side will be in. Chelsea have shown defensive frailty. So have Man City this year. I mean, it, it, you've got to be over, and I think that's the way to play. It could be a terrific game, this one. It could be really volatile. I think we could play over two and a half. We may be better off playing over three and a half in this one. I think that's it. Over three and a half. Chelsea depleted with uh, decent defenders. And obviously, company's not expected to play for Man City, neither. So we want to be maybe over three and a half, Butler. Definitely. Look at all the stats. 21 goals in the last six games between these two sides. It was 3-2 in the cup at Chelsea. Chelsea lost 3-2. Man City won the game. And it's all about over two and a half goals. 13 to 20, under two and a half goals. 13 to 20, over two. And I've got a little bit short. Bookies are predicting goals over three and a half, six to four. You'd usually get five to two for your money. But I'll tell you what, go over four and a half as well. I think that could be a better round about three to one. But definitely goals. Under two and a half is 13 to 10. And over one and a half for your odds on punters is definitely going to be two. 10 to, two to 11 for that. But it's all about goals. And I think it's all about Man City's goals. OK, so we're looking at first goal scorer, Russ. Yeah, I've already said at the top of the piece here, Flash, it's Tevez for me. Six from six against uh, Chelsea in the last six games. Obviously, terrific record against these guys. And we're slightly erring on the side of City, aren't we? I'll be with Carlos all day long here. OK, Butler, Tevez all the way. Well, if he's, he's picked, that's the thing. He hasn't been Dezeco playing him in week. Aguero's a certainty to play. 6-1 to one, Aguero. Torres 15-2. to two. Will he play after the weekend? Team news is vital, but it's one thing it won't be. No goal scorer is no option for me. Matter 10, 11-1 to one hazard. But Aguero tips the market at 6-1. to one. Cheers, Butler. The last game of the day, London derby. Tottenham versus West Ham. And I think Tottenham... But then West Ham go to Newcastle and win. I think this is the hardest game to call of all. These two teams despise each other. I've been to this fixture the last four years. Actually, like the first time I'm missing one in the last five. Always a real hate game between these two sets of fans. Difficult to call because I just don't see how Spurs are in the best form at the moment. Butler can't split them. Does that bring the draw? Well, I can spare him. I fancy Tottenham. Four to six is a little bit too short, but the stats tell you Tottenham have got a fantastic record. They've won, they haven't lost this fixture in eight games, and they haven't even scored you a goal. West Ham just don't score against Tottenham. Four to six, you can get Tottenham. Five to one, West Ham. 11 to four, the draw. Maybe a little bit of value, 11 to four, the draw. But I couldn't back Tottenham at four to six, but I think they'll win, though. Cheers, the Butler. Well, just time to say thanks to Russ from Sporting Bet, and happy punting. Good luck. Thank you.